Kids are capable of great creativity, and they initially engage in learning very naturally. Uh, kids who are in supportive environments, they continue to learn. But what about those kids who do not have the benefits of a supportive environment in, in their homes? How do we provide them with the personalized learning support they need to be to reach their full potential? The story I'm going to tell is one about the science and technology of engaging and enhancing learning. And this isn't the story you're hearing about the internet giving access to the world's masses. Access is important, but it's not enough, especially for those kids who don't, do not have the benefits of the middle class home. In that access model, there's a lot of focus on the input to learning, but we need more focus on the output of learning, the educational outcomes that we want all kids to achieve. Imagine we could double how much students learn or cut the time in half that it takes to learn valuable skills. Those are among the goals of the Simon Initiative that uh, Dr. Suresh mentioned. And that Simon Initiative encompasses our efforts at Carnegie Mellon to enhance the science and practice of learning. Uh, we've also created this Global Learning Council that's bringing together industry and universities and foundations towards this outcome goal, right? Improving educational outcomes. And that group has created some great examples of improving outcomes. I'll start with one of uh, my own. We've created these computer-based intelligent tutoring systems that provide kids with one-on-one -on -one support, like a human tutor. And those are in widespread use in thousands of schools around the world. Experiments on the uh, effectiveness of those have shown that in a full school year, it can actually double students' achievement in algebra through the use of these supportive technologies and combined with a human teacher. Similarly, at the college level, we've created a lot of online, very highly interactive courses one for statistics was demonstrated to help students learn more in half a semester than a full uh, course. Our partners in the Global Learning Council, like Kaplan, have done similar experiments. Kaplan did this comparison of 50 minutes of lecture video that they had to 10 minutes of research-based examples of experts solving problems. That 10 minutes led to better learning than the lecture model. So the lecture model is based on experts self-reflecting on what they know to design content. But the trouble is, experts don't really know what they know. Experts in uh, tennis, for instance, will say that they impart topspin on a ball by flipping their wrist. But actually, video studies show that their wrists are stiff at the point of contact with the ball. You acquired uh, your native language without a having language. We don't really know what we know. And a consequence of that is when we look at actual data from learning, we're often surprised. So in this algebra project that, uh, that we created, teachers told us kids have a lot of problems, difficulties with story problems. They're harder than equations. But the data showed us exactly the opposite, quite surprising. Instructors are just not aware of the nuances that they acquire through experience. Uh, it's implicit in their learning. So technology, in addition to being able to personalize instruction, is a way to collect lots of data to discover these nuances. And by discovering these nuances, we can enhance instruction. So we've created this data lab. It's a huge repository of such data. And we've repeatedly used it to discover barriers to learning that trip up struggling students. So if we redesign instruction based on addressing those barriers that we've discovered, we can get those two times better, two times faster learning outcomes that I mentioned earlier. We've also been experimenting with different approaches to instruction. Now, if you look at debates on, on education, you might come away thinking there's two different ways to teach. But in fact, we've discovered 200 trillion different ways of teaching. There's 200 trillion different combinations of strategies for supporting learning. And you'll hear from Emma about some advanced technologies to help us find the best pathways. And then Justine's going to tell you about some social emotional issues on top of that. Going forward, we're inviting our Global Learning Council partners and others to contribute data and methods to this data lab. And we uh, want to support them in making these kinds of discoveries that are going to enhance learning going forward. The goal is to make a huge difference in education for these kids that, that need it most. And it's a huge challenge, but uh, I think through a unified effort of industry and universities and government, 
we'll be able to unlock the mystery and potential of human learning. Thank you.